Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife review for you. Today we are looking at a CJRB. Now this one's been around for a while and I've had it for a while and really, really enjoying it. I just haven't got to this review and I sort of have to apologize for that. Um, it's just, this has been a crazy winter. It's been very busy. It feels like every minute of my time is committed to something. Um, so anyway, I'm kind of happy to be able to sit down and share with you some of my thoughts about the Scoria. Um, I have to say that when I first saw this, I, I'm kind of sharing my bias here a little bit, but the first time I looked at this knife, I right away was like, hey, I love that design. Um, I was just kind of hoping that something wasn't terribly wrong with it. Um, I like the Feldspar as well from CJRB, and I would have previously said that was the best CJRB, but I kind of feel like maybe this has taken its place. Um, I will say the Feldspar is a little heftier and the blade is a little beefier. So if you really need that, that may be the way you want to go. But for many, many people, this is going to be a great option. It is going to cost a little bit more. I guess I should warn you about that. There are some titanium components here, the pocket clip and the uh, pivot collar there, which probably put it in, uh, is what put it up to that, you know, I think they're about 65 bucks or so. So they cost a little bit more. The other thing is, I know not everyone likes black coated blades. I don't like them myself. But so far, as you can see, this has had quite a bit of pocket time. And there are some marks there that you can see visible, but not bad. It's held up pretty darn well. And I know some of you actually like when your black blades get all beat up and, and scratched up. Uh, I don't particularly like that, but I know a lot of you guys do. Um, let me start off with the size. It, that's the big difference it's very similar in size to the feldspar but it's much svelter okay it's 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 a little bit more dainty i guess eight inches overall three and a half inches on the blade the closed length how much space it's actually going to be in your pocket is four and a half inches all right three and three quarter inches of grip area so that's plenty for you know my large hands and probably for most people that's going to be lots and lots of grip area plus you have that forward finger choil which you can use to choke up if you want to and the weight on this is a very comfortable 3.4 ounces so size and weight and how this carries in pocket it is great out of you know out of all the things that i like about this one of those is absolutely the fact that it is very lightweight now yeah you're you, you know i wouldn't call this maybe as heavy duty as the feldspar but most of us for our edc tasks don't need something that can you know chop a tree down or take pry a car door off we just need a, a useful cutting tool and this definitely fits the bill so let's let's do a quick rundown here on the various features of this knife and why I like or don't like them. So starting up here with the blade, we've got a pretty standard drop, drop point blade, a bit of a top swedge here, flat grind. It is the RPM9 steel, which is CGRB's in-house steel. The performance on this is quite nice. You know, a big, it's, you know, it's still a budget steel, but uh, it's it's quite a nice upgrade from HCR 13 MOV or D2 even uh, because you're getting the stainless steel the the stainlessness of it which I definitely like um, probably comparable to you know VG10 if you're if you're looking for something you know that you can kind of gauge from your own collection um, you guys know and I've already mentioned it I'm not a big fan of black coatings because I just find they get all scratched up and beat up I'd much rather see a stone wash or better yet a satin finish but this has held up pretty nicely um, the only downside i guess i get that's one of the <clears throat> one of the issues i have is the only way that you can get a non-black coated blade at least that i know of at this point is i think there's a knife center or smoky mountain knives works there's a there's an exclusive from somewhere i want to say maybe smoky mountain knife works does more exclusive so let's go with that um I could be wrong. It could be Knife Center exclusive. Nonetheless, it's not easy to get a non-coated blade. I'm hoping that White Mountain Knives does a lot of uh, CGRB exclusives. I'm hoping they'll do one with a satin blade uh, and maybe you know some unique handle color or something. But uh, as of now, that's that's not a thing. But I will mention it to Justin that maybe that would be uh, something that people would welcome. Um, in terms of actual performance, nice thin slicey blade. Now you can see it's thin blade stock. We're you know a good bit under an eighth of an inch thick here. So this is a thin blade. It's meant more for slicing than it is for you know any kind of harder use lateral force type of stuff. But if you just want a good cutting tool, this is pretty nicely done. And, and for me, the edge has held up well. 
sorry, it's focusing on the wrong thing. There we go. For me, the edge has held up well and the coating has held up well. Uh, so I really have no complaints about this blade whatsoever. Other than the fact that sometimes I purposely, if I'm going out in the bush or something like that, I may choose something with a, with a heftier blade and a more robust um, overall build. Okay, so that's the blade. What about the action? Well, I'll show you right now. Pretty snappy action. The detent is nicely tuned. The thumb studs work really well. The flipper tab works really well. And I think you can even spidey flick this using the, the thumb stud. Yeah, you can. So action is quite smooth. All right, from time to time, every, I don't know, like maybe once a week or something, when I pick this knife up and flip it, I can feel the, the bearings roll around a little bit, but it's not a big deal. And, and I haven't done anything to this in terms of, you know, taking it apart and lubricating it or anything. So if you were to take this apart, clean it and lubricate it, you would probably get even better performance. All I've done with it is carry it and cut stuff with it. So um, you could you could really improve that action probably a little bit. But even as it stands, it's quite a nice action. The only complaint I have on the action side is the fact that every so often, especially right-handed, it's okay. Um, but this lock bar can be a little tough to, to get to. It's just a little thin there. Um, I don't know, maybe a little bit of texturing, but not too rough of texturing would, would help it out. Uh, Otherwise, though, total win. And even in that case, like it's not bad. You can see I'm pretty easily doing it here, but I sort of have to jam the fat of my thumb on there to, to uh, get a hold of that um, lock bar. Okay, so that's a very minor complaint, and that's really the only complaint I have about the action. Otherwise, totally superb. Um, so having said that, let's move on. Uh, it is uh, running on ceramic bearing, so pretty snappy action, decent detent. Um, moving on to handle construction and design. First of all, look at that micarta. Very nicely done. Uh, feels great in hand, looks spectacular. The titanium pivot collar I think is a really nice touch, as is the pocket clip. It really, you know, it for the price point, which I think is like 70 bucks, this looks really, really clean and just upgrade it, upgrades it just a little and, and adds an element to pride of ownership, um, which I, I'm, I'm very happy to see. I know some of you probably watching this go, put a bent over clip on that thing and make it 50 bucks. Fair enough, I, you know, I, I could, I can absolutely see the, the logic behind that reasoning, but I enjoy these just minor touches. And, and in terms of how this pocket clip works, it is excellent. It, you know, I know um, if you're a fan of the Apostle P like I am, you've heard him complain about milled titanium clips a lot. And this one you cannot complain about. It is very nicely done. Um, so no issue with that part. Per wow. With that particular <laughs> point. Um, too many P's in that sentence. Now, the next thing I want to touch on very quickly is ergonomics. And it's it's quite good. Now, is it the most comfortable thing I've ever handled? No. And that's because it's quite thin. Okay. So for a thin knife, this is very, very good. You know, yeah, would... Uh, I don't know, would my AD-10 be more comfortable in hand? Or maybe, uh, here's a good example, you know, Cold Steel Voyager has this big, thick, beefy handle. So is this more comfortable? Well, yeah, but it's, it's five-eighths of an inch thick. So how could it not be? All right, for something that's meant to be, uh, you know, a lightweight, slim, easily carried cutting tool, this is really, really good. Very comfortable in hand uh, for what it is, right? You've got to kind of, you've got to give that some consideration. Um, so having gotten all that out of the way, we've covered pretty well every detail. Let's, uh, oh, hold on. Um, there is some milling internally here to save weight. And we already talked about the weight. This is pretty lightweight, um, open construction. So, um, and, and let me add nested liners, which I really, really like. All right. I, you know, it, it's not necessary, but it's definitely more than welcome. I really like to see those nested liners, just an ac ex extra little bit of detail. Now, what are some competitive options? What are some alternatives that you might want to look at? Well, uh, you can save a little money and go with the Real Steel H6. This is much beefier. This is a pretty overbuilt knife. It's more comparable to the Rat Model 1, but the steel is very nice. The construction is pretty good. It's, it's you know, you can see it's not quite as, as uh, you know, it doesn't have some of those nicer upgrades that this has, but it's a bit budget, it's a bit more budget friendly and a bit heavier duty. The Feldspar perhaps would be similar. 
Uh, what else have we got? I already showed you the Voyager. If you want something really crazy and big and beefy, the Voyager would be another option. Uh, Rat Model 1 is always a good comparison. Most people are familiar with the Rat Model 1 and, and kind of use it as a standard with good reason, I might add. Um, this one, I, again, you know, this has the D2 steel and it's probably a little bit cheaper. Uh, around the same price point, about that 70 bucks, is the Civivi Cogent. This is pretty fun because of that button lock. Um, the ergonomics on this are not as good. This is a much more comfortable knife. The the weird, I, I hate knives that have this back thing here. It's, it's uh, you know, my thumb kind of misses it if I'm holding it in a saber grip, but back here, it's just awkwardly placed. Uh, I've never been a fan of, you know, the the weird placement of this ramp. Um, and a number of knives have it. it. It's always in the way on every knife I've ever seen. Um, so a nice straight back like that is much preferred. Uh, anyway, uh, or if you're going to do a ramp, you have to implement that into the blade and give me a little more handle for ergonomics. But uh, fidget factor, this definitely wins the day. Um, and the blade steel is quite nice again on this guy. So you're, you know, a, it competes. It's, it's a good competitor at that $70 price point what else have we got here um oh this is this is recent you should both of these reviews should come out i think this week i've had a couple people asking about this one this is the petrified fish uh cheaper price point you know again not some of those nicer details uh k110 steel instead but uh you know it's still a, a compelling design very clean uh that's if you like the design of this i think you might be be drawn to this one as well Let's throw in quickly a Spyderco Resilience just to sort of hold that Tenacious lineup. It's obviously much bigger. Tenacious would be more comparable, uh, but much less desirable. If you want to go something a little bit tougher while still staying that light and slim option, Cold Steel Recon American Lawman, very good option. Let's throw a Para 2 in here. This, of course, is the Para 2 that I customized with um, the Sharp, sharp Dress Knives Scales and MXG clip. But again, because everyone's familiar with that, I'll put it in here even though they're not at the same price point. And I think that sounds like enough comparisons for one video. Uh, let's give you my final conclusion. So if you've been watching at all, you know I did have a couple of minor complaints about this knife, but nothing serious at all. Overall, this is a very, very good option and a fantastic everyday carry knife for probably... 99% of people who want to carry a knife. Yeah, there's the odd person who spends a little more time in the woods or wants something a little heavier duty. And for that, you may want to go to the Feldspar or some of the other options I showed you here. Um, or if you want this as sort of that light duty day where you know you're, you have a day in the office or a day where you're not going to be doing anything super crazy, or you just want something super lightweight because you're wearing track pants, um, you shouldn't wear them in public, but nonetheless, maybe, maybe you've got a reason. <laughs> and so this could be an option for you as well. There you go. Thanks a lot for watching. Those are my thoughts on the CJRB Scoria. Check out White Mountain Knives. I think they have some in stock. If not, just put a, an email notification on there. And when they do come in stock, you can use my discount code SHARPSTUFF and save yourself 10% off this or anything else that Justin has over there. All right. Thanks again for watching. We will talk to you soon.